Everybody loves a good zombie game, right? <laughs> Nobody's ever made one of those before. <coughs> Smoker must have got me. So you think there's too many Battle Royale games out there, huh? Yeah. Kid, you ain't seen nothing. Just like the never-ending horde of the undead, zombie games have spread like an unstoppable virus. Yet another zombie defense. How's that for a title? Completely self-aware. Hey Joe, what's going on, man? Hey, Axe Man, what are you doing? Not much, just kicking it. You you wanna play a zombie game? No! Is that why you called me? No, I don't wanna play a zombie game! Not with Joe! Not with you! No! I, I no! It's Left 4 Dead 2 though! Oh! Oh, Left 4 Dead 2? Oh, hell yeah! That's one of the classics! Oh, I thought you were gonna kill me for a second. I was. I was. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I love a good zombie survival horde game just like anybody else. But I'd go on record and say the vast majority of these titles are, uh... <laughs> Zombies have always been a trend, a low-hanging fruit, but the genre really peaked in the 2000s with these gems. So while it's relatively easy to create a zombie game, it's about a thousand times more difficult to make it fun and stand out from the horde. The titles may be different, but the methods are the same. Survive as long as you can, shoot anything that moves, especially your teammates. That's what these games are all about. What the hell are you doing, Francis? But of the thousands of zombie titles, in my opinion, there is one true king. Stubbs the Zombie. I mean, Left for Dead 2. All right, maybe there's two kings. Dead Space fans be like, Reddy's Plasma Cutter. Dare I say it, Left for Dead 2 might even be a masterpiece. But has Left for Dead 2 aged like cheese or a fine wine? Is it worth revisiting with your buddies, or even solo? How deep and dynamic is the gameplay? Was Valve and Turtle Rock able to evolve the FPS and co-op genres in ways other games haven't? And is Left 4 Dead 2 worthy of being called a masterpiece? Well, let's grab some peels. Peels here! Become the tank, and survive the apocalypse straight into this. Hold up. I ain't seen headphones like these before. Jesus, don't let that stop you from grabbing the Raycon Everyday E25s. I won't. Have a nice day. You too, Bill. This video is sponsored by Raycon. Why are these headphones so awesome? Raycon offers premium quality wireless headphones at a fraction of the cost of its competitors. You know the ones I'm talking about. Raycon's headphones are comfortable, discreet, and I use them when I go in dark. You can pick and customize your colors, and they also come in this cool little carrying case. That's also a charger, and this thing carries enough juice to fully charge the earbuds four times over. If you haven't converted to wireless headphones yet, there's no better option than Raycon. The sound quality is amazing, the E25s come with six hours of playtime, enough for me to beat Dark Souls twice seamless Bluetooth pairing, and best of all, you can get 15% off your entire order by using the link buyraycon.com slash actman. Link will be in the description and the pinned comment. Thank you, Raycon, for sponsoring this video. Left 4 Dead 2 wasn't always viewed in a positive light. You know Valve, right? Known for not producing sequels to critically acclaimed titles despite the massive demand for it? Oh, it was the polar opposite in 2009. Left 4 Dead 1 and 2 released exactly one year apart. Wow. That's both amazing and confusing, isn't it? Given the depth and quality of 2, it's impressive they didn't need more time. But it's confusing because why would Valve announce a sequel just seven months later? Oh my god, dude, are you kidding me? <laughs> Love for Dead 2 already! Love for Dead 2. That is ridiculous. A year later. A lot of fans were pretty upset, and I was too. Some went as far as to create and join an official boycott group on Steam that got over 37,000 members. It seemed like Valve was gonna ditch the original to make a quick buck, and as a result the sequel would separate the player base. Yeah! Yeah, you guys like that? Fuck that, here's the new one. 
I'm sorry, Left 4 Dead. I'm sorry. I really like you, okay? I'm so s Oh my god, I f***ed it up. I am so sorry that got out of hand. In response to the backlash, Valve was like, All right, you don't like it when we make sequels? Have it your way. Truly the greatest petty play ever made. Left 4 Dead 2 was also the subject of other controversies. Its violence and gore was censored in other countries. The cover art didn't translate well to Britain as the backwards peace sign apparently doesn't mean peace at all. I guess I've been flipping the bird to my British audience for years. Sorry about that, mate. There were also some absurd accusations of racism because it was set in New Orleans and had black zombies. Microsoft was under fire for selling DLC that Valve wanted to give out for free. But all these controversies are completely irrelevant now. They were a part of Left 4 Dead 2's release, not its legacy. Still, no matter how much I love it, Left 4 Dead 2 made the original obsolete. There's more content, weapons, zombies. It's a better game in every sense. Eventually, Valve just said screw it and added all the characters and campaigns from 1 into 2. There's pretty much no reason now to play the original. So, for the sake of simplicity, I'm combining them both under a single title, just as Valve should have done initially. <laughs> when you think of your favorite multiplayer shooters, what comes to mind? Halo, Call of Duty, Overwatch, Battlefield, Gears of War, Rambo the Video Game, Counter-Strike, Team Fortress 2, Rainbow Six Siege. Whether you're conquering raids in Destiny or gearing up in a warthog with your homies in Halo 3, what a lot of these shooters accomplish is give you fun ways you can work together as a team. That synergy and strategy between you and your friends is so underrated, yet none of these shooters really commit to the idea of teamwork. Not even Battle Royales. That might sound crazy, but these games all lack the very thing that makes Left 4 Dead 2 so unique. My man, Coach. Oh yeah. I mean, a true cooperative experience. You see, first-person shooters like to stroke your nuts and ego by fetishizing power fantasies just like Akira Toriyama. It's become a running joke that everybody wants kills and nobody's gonna play the goddamn object. Who cares if we're losing? I've got gold damage and eliminations. So in a lot of shooters, matches often come down to groups of people playing as individuals completing tasks on their own. So the question developers need to ask themselves isn't, why aren't people playing as a team? The question should be, how are we encouraging them to work together? Left 4 Dead 2 doesn't fuck around. You learn very quickly, rookie. That lone wolf stuff stays behind. Clear? Got it, sir. Oh my god, no! Help! Help! Special Infected can incapacitate a single player on their own, and without help from a teammate, you're screwed. On-screen text and tutorials cause no confusion about how the game works or what's gonna happen when you do this. So if you want to do the whole play style of Any man who falls behind is left behind. Well, Jack Sparrow, you're gonna be ass rammed harder than a blonde in a room with five dudes. Working together and communicating is the only way to survive this zombie apocalypse. Cover me. Cover me good. Oh, I mean, sure, some elite Dorito-sniffing G-Fuel-injecting gamers can beat the campaign solo, but nobody is expected to do that, because Left 4 Dead was designed to be played exactly with four or eight people. So all the game's mechanics revolve around back-scratching. Get mine back now, and I'll have yours later. You leave me to die, I'm rooting for the other team. Losing just one survivor can often mean the demise of the entire group. Sticking together is essential, but there's times when splitting up has its own rewards. By spreading out, you can cover more ground and find useful items, but at a risk of getting caught. However, staying too close together makes you a prime target for the spitter or charger. And this is what makes Left 4 Dead so unique. Your performance as an individual is far less important Nobody cares how many zombies you killed, but get this freaking jockey off my back and I'll suck your d- In some cases though, you might have to be left for dead. I don't know what you guys were doing out there, but you all just left me to die. Well, hey, that's the name of the game. Fuck, I hate that you said that. That's exactly the name of the game.
trying to go back and help your teammates in a hopeless situation could result in everyone losing. Actually, we gotta leave him. No. We gotta leave him. No. We can't okay. make it. We leave nobody behind. Oh shit. We should have left him behind. Oh, I, I couldn't see it. Oh, damn it. But one person making the executive decision to sprint like Usain Bolt to the safe room is better than everyone dying. And that's what's so awesome. Players are gonna be met with these tough decisions. And that's the name of the game. It is so chaotic. When the match is on the line, that mad dash to the safe room is so intense. Watch the Smoker, 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 smoker in the car. No, no, no. Just let him, just let him chill. Oh my god. Shit, shit. Come on, move your ass. Move your ass. Stop him, bro. Get in. Come on, come on, come on, bro. Ah, no. You can make it, you can make it, get in. Also, Left 4 Dead 2 being a co-op game is best played, well, wouldn't you know, in co-op. I don't believe it! One negative of this hardcore focus is having to put faith in your teammates. No, RGI, don't go in by yourself. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of the few criticisms I have, if you play with randoms who don't use mics, a lot of the magic is lost. And if your teammates do some dumb shit, it can be tilting. <laughs> Alright, let's just walk past this witch. Oh, God. Don't, what are you doing, okay. dumb? What Step are you- five. No, Step you five. fool! Oh my sweet Jesus. Oh, <laughs> Similarly, it's not at all fun to see one side pub stomp the other into oblivion. As a rule of thumb, Left 4 Dead 2 is most enjoyable when played in a semi-casual environment. And the best matches are ones where both teams have a good chance at victory. Left 4 Dead 2 was developed with an unmistakable focus on a specific type of shooter gameplay, and it just whoops ass. But how do the mechanics work when they're put into practice? A lot of games seem to think more mechanics equals more fun. But Left 4 Dead 2 proves the opposite. You got a main and secondary weapon, a grenade, med kit, extra healing, you can shoot, melee, crouch, and jump. On paper you think, well how could that not get boring? Oh you sweet zombie child. We'll get to that. The shooting feels fantastic, largely because of the great sound effects and dismemberment of the zombies. I think Valve said there's like 400 different ways they can explode or lose their arms. In a fast-paced game like this, helping your team needs to be quick and simple. Handing off items, healing your teammates, or reviving them can be done in one to two clicks. Anything more than that would disrupt the flow and intensity. There's no complicated inventory to manage, no menus or building forts, aiming down sights, sprinting, thruster packs, grapple hooks. All that extra crap is trimmed down to make it as accessible as possible. You can even reload while meleeing zombies so you're never truly defenseless. Both Left 4 Deads don't have many cutscenes. In fact, they only have two. But hot damn! That's all they need. Thought they supposed to be saving our asses. Enemy AC on the above! But it's genius because after you've played the game, you're like, Wait a minute! This shows off every single mechanic. We're gonna get off! Get together! Oh, shit! Shit! The intros also give you a taste of all the different infected. Such a neat way to hype up the gameplay. Four minutes was all Valve needed to say, hey, this is what you do in Left 4 Dead. Ain't seen anything like this before. Jesus, don't let that stop you from smearing it all over yourself. Excuse me? Excuse me? Within a few matches, you'll understand everything, but the game has far more going on under the hood. Left 4 Dead would have literally been just another zombie game without its director. No, not that guy, he sucks. This unseen man pulls all the strings and is responsible for the game's insane replay value. The campaigns are great, sure, but if items and zombies always spawned in the same locations, then players would simply memorize them and the game would become staler than prank videos on YouTube. The director is responsible for everything that is thrown your way. All right, guys, this take, I really want to fuck the survivors up. Oh my God. Oh my god! Oh, thank you. Oh, son of a- Arzia, get back here. Let me heal you. No! Oh. 
Oh my god! Okay, fucking finally gonna heal you after eight years. The layouts are the same, but enemies and items can appear in any location and are procedurally generated. Ew! Now, you might cringe at that term, procedurally generated, but No Man's Sky ain't half bad now. The director monitors your team's performance to determine what challenges should be thrown your way. If survivors are having a tough time, the director might be like, all right, I'm easing back on the throttle, spawning fewer zombies and giving you more helpful items. If survivors are breezing through with ease, which is what I always do, the director will engage all thrusters and send hordes of zombies at you more often, or spawn a second tank. The director can even alter map geometry by adding more cars with alarms, or in the parish, block off certain paths. Now what do we got for baddies? Well, the common infected are spread throughout, most on the main path. They got different behaviors, some wander, fight each other, sit or stand. When spotting the survivors, they'll charge mindlessly at them. These zombies can whittle you down fast and slow your movement to a crawl, making you easy prey for the special infected. Because the maps are so complex and the director can be unpredictable, massive fights can break out at any moment, forcing the team to adapt and find the best location to fend off the horde. This approach to game design is so cool because things might be going perfectly fine one moment and 3.2 seconds later, chaos erupts. We're just gonna run, we're just gonna run, all right? Y'all ready? Three, two, one, let's go! I don't know where I'm going. Fuck! <laughs> it just erupts into fucking chaos immediately. <laughs> Left 4 Dead 2 also does an incredible job of mixing in audio cues and using music to alert players on what's coming. I hear a boomer. Violent video games increase aggressive behavior. Most multiplayer shooters in general rarely add music because it tends to get in the way. This game uses it to build tension and heighten the drama, adding an emotional layer to the gameplay, which is exactly what a horror game is supposed to do. Getting blinded by a boomer and hearing its theme will be followed by a few seconds of dread, then desperation and worry as your vision returns and you hope your team hasn't been dunked on. Each of the special infected make their own attractive noises and have their own themes when attacking. But survivors don't know exactly where the special infected are. There's plenty of places to hide, so hearing a smoker cough in the distance will put you on edge. It creates an unsettling atmosphere until the tension is broken when the zombies finally strike. No audio cues are more dramatic than the rumbling of a- <laughs> Oh shit! Shit! Left 4 Dead 2 trains you to use your ears as much as it does your eyes. Sometimes you'll be walking around casually grabbing supplies. <laughs> the structure is build up, peak, and relax. So when you hear the sound of zombies yelling in the distance, you tense up as you await the inevitable mob. After you deal with them, the director relaxes a bit and you can take a breather before it again starts to build up. One of the most satisfying and fulfilling things in the world is completing a campaign's finale in Left 4 Dead 2 and hearing that classic ass theme. You can put this over the ending of so many movies. The director is what makes the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay of Left 4 Dead 2 so dramatic as anything can happen at any time. And no matter how many times you complete a campaign, every playthrough is going to be different. This design choice is the sole reason why you can play Left 4 Dead 2 11 years later and not be bored immediately. That, my friends, is a telltale sign of a masterpiece. To me, a masterpiece is something that is barely affected by the passage of time. 
where many games age poorly or lose their appeal because something else comes along and does what they do better, a masterpiece is something you can always go back to, knowing you'll have a great time as if you played it like it was brand new. 11 years later, Left 4 Dead 2 remains relevant, as does pretty much every Valve game, with roughly 20,000 people playing it every day. This type of long-term relevance is scarce in the game industry. But what happens when you take Left 4 Dead 2's core formula and apply it to PvP? Well, you get this. Don't shoot the car. I did- <laughs> In Versus, the goal is simply to get the most points based on how far the survivors get. So even if one round your team wipes, it's not over. In the same way survivors need to stick together, the infected need to attack together. In Versus though, some oversights become apparent as the maps had to be designed with both modes in mind. Since your items don't carry over to the next round, there is little incentive to explore off the beaten path, as it just gives the other team more chances to kill you. This is where Left 4 Dead's medieval imitator, Vermintide 2, actually enhances the formula. Because you can improve your endgame rewards by carrying items that take up valuable slots. A mechanic like this in Left 4 Dead 2, or Back 4 Blood, that improved the team's score or gave them better equipment at the start of the next round, would give that incentive for players to take risks, exploring the areas that are barely touched in Versus. Since Survivor's greatest strength is teamwork, it's best to talk shit about the other team and hope they turn on each other. Oh, hey, hey, you got something on your face, Act-Man. You got something on your face. There you go. Oh, got it. oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> but really, every special infected is meant to disrupt the team's ability to communicate and work together. It's not hard to plow through hordes of zombies with little resistance, but toss in a smoker that can pull someone away from the group, and you done change the game. Think you're safe staying grouped up? Nah. Here comes the charger to plow through everyone. The hunter can pin a survivor down and deal insane damage if not dealt with quickly. The jockey can steer someone into bad situations. The spitter deals massive damage when combined with the others, but can also deny access to an area. And the boomer, being the best class, can distract and blind the survivors, making them unable to deal with the other infected and draw a horde. Left 4 Dead 2 is easy to pick up and play, yet it has a high skill ceiling that comes with experience. There are so many strategies both teams can use, it comes down to the depths of your own creativity. Surprise, motherfucker! Oh! The boomer throws a monkey wrench in every gamer's instinct to shoot anything that moves. Often it's as simple as dropping down into the middle of a group and blowing chunks everywhere. With the power of cancer, smokers can pull survivors towards the witch or a car, even off a ledge. With their great cardio, if hunters pounce from far away, they can attack their survivor's weak point for massive damage. Their quick speed also makes for a great distraction. Chargers are the best at cheese kills. Oftentimes, one good charge is all it takes to wipe the whole team. Tanks can knock around cars and throw rocks. The spitter can arc goo into a tight area to dish out a lot of damage. So much can happen in a single match. God, it's so good. With all the strategies the infected can use, it may seem like the balance is skewed one way, but that's when you jump back and say no. Oh. <laughs> it wouldn't let me spit. <laughs> no one has the right to smoke me in a way that makes me feel uncomfortable. So what do I do? First, I say no. Then, I get out of there. The survivors always have a chance to react and anticipate. There's a brief moment where you can shoot a smoker before it incapacitates you. With good timing, you can even cut his tongue off. Chargers can often be avoided by simply getting out of the way, and with some precise aim, players can one-shot the witch with a shotgun. That's what I thought! There's immense satisfaction in using good strategy to decimate a group of survivors, or work together to overcome the odds and reach the safe house. The versus mode is where the true beauty of Left 4 Dead 2's game design is put on full display, and it's where I get the most enjoyment. It's a type of gameplay that very few shooters even attempt to match, and none, in my opinion, have ever succeeded. But I'd like to switch gears for a bit and discuss how bad the characters are. EXCUSE ME! I'm sorry Excuse coach, I didn't me. mean it. The original characters, while iconic and cool when they would talk, was 
Well, that was the problem. They didn't have enough dialogue. But the style and identity was there. Well, I guess we're walking. I hate walking. But five minutes ago, you hated flying. And it turns out I was right about that. It's impossible not to like the survivors. Francis being a cool biker dude with tattoos, Bill, an old grizzled Vietnam veteran, Zoe, a college student, Lewis, an analyst in an IT department. They come from different backgrounds and all have interesting relationships with each other that is fleshed out the longer you play. I keep telling you we're looking for a sailboat. Okay, but why didn't we drive one of the other boats to go look for a sailboat? Because, hey, yeah, what the hell, Bill? In Left 4 Dead 2, the cast were given a lot more material, and it shows. Whispering Oaks! Shit, I used to go there when I was a kid! Oh good, now we can die there as adults. Coach, a high school football coach. Rochelle, a producer for a news station. Nick, a shady businessman and drifter. And Ellis, a redneck mechanic. While Left 4 Dead is meant to be a spooky zombie game, it's also able to make you laugh. At the heart of it is a group who find themselves in a grim situation, but you can tell they're having fun at times. Hey, check it out, man! That's the Midnight Riders! Hey, the Midnight Riders! I used to love that band! Best pyrotechnics in the business! Cracking jokes, getting to know each other, they feel like real people. If you want to know how great the voice actors are, just listen to their screams. <laughs> Nowhere does the tone of Left 4 Dead become more apparent than through graffiti in and around the safe rooms, where people write heartfelt messages to loved ones, and also talk mad shit. This serves as the main storytelling tool. Left 4 Dead 2 is a prime example of how to write and design characters in a zombie apocalypse. It's spooky and scary without being depression fuel. It's funny and charming without being a slapstick comedy. And Left 4 Dead 2 fully embraces the movie theme it's trying to replicate. Each campaign is stylized as a film poster with cheesy captions and the four survivors looking badass and cool with awesome names like Blood Harvest, Dead Air, Swamp Fever. The story isn't anything special, but because we like both groups of people, we want to see them succeed. At the end of the day, you're not playing Left 4 Dead 2 for a deep, engaging story. You're playing it to kill zombies with your buddies. Have some jump scares and laugh. But like other shooters, what can make or break the entire game is the... So how are the levels in Left 4 Dead 2? Oh! There's no question folks, this is top tier stuff right here. Both in terms of gameplay and narrative. Just like the graffiti, Left 4 Dead is packed with environmental storytelling, showing you the state of the world and leaving the details up to your imagination. Unlike a lot of zombie stories, neither game takes place long after the infection, so there's no dilapidated buildings overcome with vegetation. Everything you see has happened recently. Holy mother of God. There's signs of struggles, barricades are used instead of invisible barriers, crashed cars, destroyed buildings. The campaigns are all god tier. They provide a stunning variety of locations and challenges. Each campaign has you progress through a series of locations as the survivors make their way to whatever evacuation method was most convenient for the writers. For example, my favorite, Dark Carnival, starts you off in a blocked off highway. The group has to ditch their car, and soon after they arrive in an abandoned motel, before ending up at the fairgrounds. Then you advance through all the cool carnival games, there's a giant slide, a merry-go-round, and you wind up in the tunnel of love. You run through a roller coaster, fight through more carnival games, some old barns, and finally have a climactic musical concert in a stadium. Hot damn. This is what Valve does best. They took the theme of a carnival, a backwoods swamp, a mall, and crafted the gameplay around it, making it visually interesting and thematically consistent. But this also provides unique gameplay opportunities like Swamp Fever and Hard Rain have a lot of flooded areas which cut down on mobility. Hard Rain also features more witches and random storms that reduce visibility and hearing. And then you got uncommon infected like the clowns, hazmat zombies, etc. which add variety to the horde. It might be hard to pay attention to the environment when zombies are clawing at your butt crack, but I encourage you to take the time to really look around and you'll see just how detailed these levels are. 
How the game uses lighting reinforces the tone and atmosphere. If the levels were too bright, the illusion and terror would be shattered. Too dark and, well, not a single person liked Alien vs Predator Requiem. So there needed to be a logical and believable way to light the different environments so players could still immerse themselves in a post-apocalyptic world. In horror games, players are naturally drawn to well-lit areas as they provide a reprieve and some much-needed comfort. They illuminate the darkness around us. In the campaign, small fires are found throughout. A lantern sticks out in the forests of Blood Harvest, set beside a couple sleeping bags and some items. The moon is a great source of light, as many levels take place at night. Searchlights have been set up to illuminate the main path, since most areas have lost power. Headlights on cars and police sirens light up the streets. Open refrigerators brighten the apartments. Some rooms are pitch black and your flashlight only reveals so much. Reloading can even be a bit frightening as you'll lose vision in these critical moments. Again, sticking together, more flashlights equals more vision. I could examine the nitty gritty details of each campaign for the next three hours. The level design is so meticulously thought out that even the outfits of the zombies fall in line with whatever location they're in. In Mercy Hospital, you see doctors in scrubs, zombies in patient gowns. Left 4 Dead 1 and 2 achieved a type of level design that is believable, tells a story, and most important, is fun and engaging to play through. There's a level of mastery in learning the layouts of each chapter. For instance, you can take the Weenie Hut Jr. method of going down this underpass in the highway, or you can be a real man and jump on this super secret truck. Bam! Now, you could go through the apartments like a mega super loser, or you can jump down like a real man and... Or you can jump down like a real man and... You can jump down like a real man! Alright, maybe you should go through the apartments. Environmental challenges like the gas station can completely screw you over. If you're a dumbass like me. Oh shit, oh shit! Oh, no! Oh my god! Oh. Is that you? You just killed him. Oh my god. <laughs> you also have to contend with heights. Confined areas are a terrible place to be if a tank shows up. Sometimes a witch will spawn in a place that is easy to avoid and other times impossible to sneak Don't by. Me. Some missions can be oppressive as hell. Chapter 4 in Dark Carnival has the shittiest fucking ending. Just get in there. Just, oh my god. They, they keep coming. Get in the safe room! A bunch of zombies keep spawning and it's damn near impossible to get in. Make no mistake, this is some of the greatest and most well thought out level design in the shooter genre. You'd expect no less from Valve. And this type of quality only falls under the category of Masterpiece. Left 4 Dead 2 would be a complete game with just the campaigns and verses. But it goes even further beyond. With such a great premise and amazing sandbox, there's plenty of variety to whet your zombie killing appetite. Survival is pretty hardcore as you fight off endless waves. They send a tank at you like every 40 seconds. And special infected rates are doubled if not tripled. For all these side modes, there's like 40 different levels to choose from. Just an absurd variety. You get unlimited time to set up your defenses, and by that I mean throw a hundred gas tanks everywhere. Unless your team is filled with chads, it's tough to last more than five minutes. There's even a versus variant of survival, so you can compete with your friends for the best time. Scavenge is basically survival, except you're on a clock, and the more gas you find, the more time you get. For the hardcore gamers, there's realism, which eliminates the outline on survivors, which makes sticking together that much more important. These modes aren't the main attraction and won't take away the majority of your time. They're supplementary. But should you ever get bored of these robust features, there's always the thriving mod community. All right, that's enough of that. But on the real, community mods and custom games are so important to the game industry and nobody understands this more than Valve, giving seemingly endless opportunities to re-experience an old classic. When it comes down to it, Left 4 Dead 2 is a shining example of the magic that most shooters 
lack these days. It's an accessible game with a hardcore focus on co-op and a high enough skill ceiling to encourage players to master the game. Despite 11 years worth of titles that have come out after Left 4 Dead 2, to this day it remains one of the most unique and replayable shooters out there. With a satisfying gameplay loop that mimics a horror movie, an amazing level of detail in the environments, a lovable cast of characters, Left 4 Dead 2 will stick with you even 11 years later. The director gives the game its insane replay value. It's brimming with content and different modes to try out, and the versus is exactly the type of exhilaration that makes playing games with your friends so much goddamn fun. Sure, the fun factor is largely dependent on who you play with, and it's not hard to get tilted into the stratosphere, but it's still amazing to play through solo. The big question, do we need a Left 4 Dead 3? It's safe to say we'd all like Valve to get off their asses and finish a trilogy for once in their goddamn lives, but I won't lie, it'd be hard to top what they accomplished here. Really, I'd love to see Valve give this formula another shot with their updated engine, a new cast of characters. Hell, I'd be down just for them to remaster Left 4 Dead 2. With Evolve being a failed experiment, Turtle Rock Studios is back to reclaim their glory with Back for Blood. For me to bestow the title of Masterpiece upon a video game is a rare occurrence. A masterpiece is timeless. It's not just how fun a game is, it's something that accomplishes exactly what it sets out to do with very few hiccups. A masterpiece is a truly unique experience that is one of the best in the business. If any one piece of Left 4 Dead's formula was out of place, be it the weapons, character, director, AI, level design, tone, atmosphere, lighting, it would have likely been forgotten years ago. But it wasn't. Every aspect of this game was nailed to near perfection. This is, and always will be, an all-time classic. And that is why Left 4 Dead 2 is a masterpiece.